One thing we like to come back here at Manage Your Damn Money is the notion that certain aspects of finance management is off limits to you. I was once told, stocks sound like something an old white man has, but not me. I thought this was a huge problem. Stocks can be for anyone who wants them and is willing to take on the risk associated with buying stocks. So to solve this problem, let's talk to an old white guy about what stocks are. I'm Andy Goodman, and the one thing I learned about money is invest in companies that even an idiot can run, because eventually one will. We're here on Manage Your Damn Money. I'm your host, of course, Ben Carter. I'm here with Andy Goodman. Andy, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me, Ben. Of course, of course. And we're actually talking about stocks and what stocks are and what stocks can do to help your financial situation. So, um, Andy, I guess you could just start off telling us a little bit about yourself and how you're connected to stocks. I started out uh, learning about stocks at a very young age. I wasn't sure what to do with my money, so my father started to tell me about the stock market. He handed me a Standard & Poor's 500 stock guide at the time and said, pick a company and put your money into it. Right. So I stumbled on a company called Nike that we, <laughs> we all know about now. We do know about yeah. Nike. And I bought my first 100 shares of Nike at $16 a share or $1,600. Oh, uh -huh. I held the stock for about a year. Okay. It did nothing at all. And I said, wow, this is you know, a waste of time, waste of money. So I sold the stock. Okay. Now I realize the value of long-term investing and compounding. Okay. If I had held the stock, okay. it would now be worth, that same 100 shares would be worth about $200,000. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was impatient, you know? I didn't, right, absolutely. So, um, so if we can just go, kind of go back, what is a stock? Like just the very basic, what is a stock? Basically, uh, a, sh a share in a public company. Investors can buy shares in, in public companies and actually own a piece of a company. But how would a regular person who doesn't know anything about stocks, what are some things that you would like suggest for, you know, going on and learning about the basics of stocks and how they can get into it if they wanted to? I think the first thing uh, someone can do is they can, they can make a list of their five favorite products and then find out what companies actually make those products and if they're traded on, on the stock market. And you, as long as you're buying companies that you know and you understand, um, and you hold them for the long term, you should do very well. Andy, I was wondering if you had any interesting stories about your personal journey in uh, financial management as, as an individual. I remember uh, years ago, I was on a business trip to Chicago, and one of my friends from college picked me up at the airport and he was telling me all about this wonderful new company that he was working for and how they had this great pension plan uh, that they were providing for him. And I said, well, tell me more about it. And he said, well, it's a 401k plan and every dollar that you put into the plan, the company will match dollar for dollar 100%. And I said, wow, that's fantastic. So how much are you, money are you putting in? And he said, I'm not putting any money in, I can't afford to. I said, what do you mean you can't afford to? The company is giving you 100% return on your money with no risk. I said, even if you took out credit card debt at 20%, you know, you're still getting 100% return. You're still making out better. And he said, no, I'm sorry. I just can't afford to do it. Oh, wow. Okay. Interesting. So I'm trying to figure out, hold on. I'm trying to figure out. He was presenting it as an investment for you? No, he, he, he was basically saying that I'm working for this great company and here's uh -huh. what they're doing. Check, check out this, this plan that they provide for me. Uh -huh. And I, start, I looked at the book. I couldn't believe what he was saying. And when I looked at the book, I realized it was, it was true, that that's, that's what they were offering. So why, was now, he not, why didn't he want to invest in it? Because he, he, it, people just don't procrastinate when it comes to putting away money. Oh, they do procrastinate. Yeah. Oh, I get it. I get it. Because that, that doesn't make sense. I'm like, that. Why would he, he couldn't afford it? He said he couldn't afford to put money into his retirement plan. Oh, well, at, the, at that time. So yeah. he was just deferring, deferring the situation. Well, that's, that's a, I think the problem most people make is they, right. they continue to defer, they procrastinate. They say, well, I've got this coming up or right. I've got to you know, put away money for my education right. or for my, my children and then my children's wedding or bar mitzvah. You right. know, it just goes on and on and on. And then at the end of the day, they don't have any have much left. So, so I guess the piece, the best what I'm hearing in that advice is basically to be intentional about investing early, 
often, regardless of how much money you're actually putting in. Yeah, the bottom line is you should always be put, trying to put away as much money as possible. Okay, okay. Um, and in terms of stocks, um, where, how much of someone's savings, so to speak, should stocks be, or what do you feel like is a comfortable amount for people to, to put away or invest in stocks? It really depends on the individual and what their comfort level is and you know, how, how comfortable are, they are with risk in general. Okay. Um, you know, there's, there's plenty of other investments outside of stocks, but it, as long as you're putting money away, um, you'll, you'll see the value of compounding over time. Okay. Cool. All right, so thanks, Andy, for coming on Manage Your Damn Money. We appreciate you coming. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah.